Hiya. So this is lesson two of the, the, uh, the circles pack. It's quite nice, this. And these are kind of actually GCSE circle theorems that you should be aware of. But the angles in the semicircle is a, a right angle. And the perpendicular from the center to the chord bisects the chord. So you get a perpendicular bisector. And that's quite, I quite like that because you can put it anywhere you want. So say I've got a chord going that way and there's the center. That shortest distance will be the perpendicular bisector. And that's quite nice because we can look at working out distances and half, finding midpoints and working out gradients to the center. It's quite nice to be able to be applied. Uh, what we've got, so a tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So we're happy that that's the tangent. And we're happy that that's the radius. It's quite good because we can do Pythag problems and work out the, the distance from the center to the point on the tangent with two lots of uh, Pythagoras. Right, let's have a go then. Let's have a go to question. So it says the points A, B and C lie on the circle. Right, so what have we got then? So I've got... Hang on. You can think about this as to where the points lie on the circle. So I've got a dodgy circle. Yeah. Uh, it says that show that A, B, D is the right angle. So B is where my right angle is. So... If I have A there, 1 comma 5, there's B, 2 comma 4, there's C, 7 comma 9. So it's not really to scale, but it seems to be working all right. There. So show that A to B to D is, is a right angle. So I need to look at gradients, don't I? So the gradient from A to B, so the change in Y, so remember I do right point take left point, so 4 take 5, 2 take 1 is going to give me minus 1. The gradient from B to C, so right take left, so 9 take 4, 7 take 2 is 1. The gradient from A to B times by the gradient from B to C will be minus 1 times 1. So that's equal to minus 1. So therefore, they must be perpendicular. So angle A, B, D. The right angle. That's quite nice, that. that information is good for us because it goes back to what we did here, there. So I've got my right angle. That means that that other line is the diameter, which means that A to C, A to C is the diameter. So this is telling us that A to C is the diameter. So the midpoint of A to C must be the center. Following that, so midpoint of AC is the center. Right, so I want the average of the x's, so that's 1 plus 7 over 2. I want the average of the y's, 5 plus 9 over 2. So the center is 4, comma 7. And then if I do the distance, I can have choices here. I can do the distance of the diameter and half it, or I can do the distance. Well, that's D, that isn't it? There, uh, look, C. I'll put C instead of D. I was going to say, why would you use C? But it's not D. Dopey. It's D for dopey. There. D for Dave, Dopey Dave. There. Right, so I've got uh, my center is C. God. Right, so if I do the distance from A to C, 
So there's my centre, uh, four comma seven. That Alex, Alex, you get really, you know, a mention here maybe if that was you waving at me then. Uh, so I've got a distance, so the radius squared will be the difference in the x, uh, difference in the x's. So four take one squared, difference in the y's, seven take two squared. So r squared is three squared plus two squared. Root is 13. There. So my equation. So I've got a center of 4, 7. And the radius is root 13, so r squared is 14. There. Now that's six minutes of an example, so I'm going to stop that example um, and do the next one. So it's a big one.